Hello, this is Phil de Fontenay. Welcome to the Motivational Mastermind. In this episode, I'll talk to you about how to deal with your anger. I'll give you methods you can use to control this destructive emotion and protect yourself, your family, and those around you. The aim of this podcast is to motivate, inspire, and empower you to joyfully live your life with passion, enthusiasm, and love, and to connect with your true nature to be the best you can be. Calm heart and mind are contagious. Spread joy wherever you are. Motivational Mastermind How to deal with your anger. Let's face it, anger is a destructive emotion. It's created wars and destroyed whole civilizations. It rips apart families and ruins perfectly fine relationships in an instant. A single surge of anger that lasts a mere moment can cause regret for an entire lifetime. From full-blown road rage to a simple heated argument, anger can consume us and cloud our judgment. And the result most always has a negative outcome. We've all experienced anger at some point, but for the most part, we got through it unscathed. But it's that chronic anger, that fear of losing control and not being able to hold back that needs to be kept in check. When bouts of anger seem to be getting far more frequent, we know it's time to do something about it, fast. The sooner the better. Most people don't want to be considered an angry person. They simply feel as though they have no control over their anger. Something happens to incite their anger and they automatically respond. In some cases, People might not even realize they're angry until something happens to trigger a rapid change in mood. If this has happened to you, maybe you feel as if there's no way to correct the root cause of the problem because you're not even sure where it stems from. The primary underlying source of all anger is usually fear. If you experience difficulty in managing your anger, fear is usually the source of the problem. When you learn to cope with your fear, you'll be taking a big step towards controlling your anger and regaining control of your life. Utilizing rational self-talk methods can be one of the best methods for handling the fear that causes anger. If negative thinking has become part of your day-to-day life, it's possible to change your state of mind. It will take work and will require commitment on your part, but it can be done. Are you ready to regain control of your life? Ready to learn how to manage your anger so you're able to live a happier and more satisfying life? Dealing with fear. The main root cause of anger in most instances is fear. Negative thinking in life also contributes to the presence of anger and increases the chance of someone becoming angry. When you refuse or are unable to see the positive aspects of life, you see things as being hopeless. As a result, you seem to continually experience problems in life on a daily basis. It's imperative that you ensure you keep your mind in the right place to be certain that you don't give in to any unnecessary or irrational fears. Paying attention to what goes on around you and making note of the things you can actually change in life while not worrying about the things you cannot change can go a long way toward helping to eradicate both fear and anger in your life. Sadly, some people set themselves up for anger by focusing their thoughts and attention on events that happened in the past. By freeing yourself from the past, you'll also be able to decrease the amount of anger you experience. Even if you've made a poor decision in the past, remember that this makes you no different from anyone else. We've all experienced problems in the past and have made poor decisions in the past. This doesn't mean that the rest of your life must suffer because of it, right? 
It does mean that you should focus on taking the right steps in the present to correct the problem as best you can. These steps can help you to evaluate your existing problems, review the choices that are available to you for resolving the problems, make use of available resources for handling the problem, come to a decision, Practice forgiveness for all those who wronged you in the past. Take the necessary steps to handle the situation immediately. The consequences of ignoring anger. Unfortunately, it's common for anger to be ignored over a long period of time. This is when anger becomes dangerous. When an individual becomes infused with anger, that person has the potential to express anger in a dangerous manner. This is when anger requires immediate attention. This person may experience difficulty in holding back their impulses, emotions, and desires. When acting out of impulse, this person frequently attacks the source of their anger. While not everyone commits a serious crime out of anger, it certainly can happen. Properly expressing your anger. There are appropriate ways you can express your anger. Self-talk is one of those ways. For example, you might ask yourself what you're thinking when you find yourself losing control. It's possible that anger may have been building inside for some time, or it could be caused by something that just happened. But either way, analyzing your thoughts can be a good way of expressing your anger and getting to the root of it. By talking to yourself through your anger, you'll also be able to learn appropriate ways to deal with it. Because for the first time, you'll be able to see it through your own eyes. It's important to keep in mind that anger is the direct result of something. It could be personal issues, such as abuse, neglect, etc. These personal issues were most likely not addressed when they occurred, but instead the negative feelings were allowed to continue building until they exploded. The effects of anger on your life. Anger can be an incredible drain on your time and energy. When someone is angry, they often spend a lot of time on negative forces within their lives. Living with it can result in an emotional roller coaster. Anger also detracts from your quality of life. Anger takes a tremendous toll on the body as well as the mind. Sometimes you may not even realize what's happening. When you're filled with anger, it's hard not to become tense, to feel stressed out, and possibly even experience gastrointestinal issues. It's also much harder to rationalize when you're angry. Over a long period of time, this type of tension, stress, and anxiety results in numerous other health issues. Gaining control of your anger. One of the first things you'll need to do when you have made the decision to work on managing your anger is to evaluate the level of it. Evaluating your emotions and thoughts can help you discover many answers that can be helpful in managing your anger. Taking an evaluation will also help you determine the significance of your problem. There are many other benefits associated with performing an evaluation of your anger. It'll serve to slow down the mind so that you can actually think before you take action. Anger often results in acting impulsively. This will seem to be difficult at first, but it becomes easier with time and practice. Remember that when you allow anger to control your life for too long, it can result in many other significant problems. I'll include an anger evaluation worksheet in the show notes for this episode at motivationalmasterminds.com. Now, how to gauge the level of your anger. Here's an anger scale that'll help you gauge the level of your anger. Level zero. You feel completely calm and relaxed. You may even feel happy and excited. You don't have any irritation or anger at all. Level one. You feel slightly irritated or anxious, but it's not having an impact on your behavior. You may not even notice it. Level 2. Your anxiety or irritation is slightly higher, but it's still not enough to bother your behavior. You may find it more difficult to relax due to the irritation you feel. 
Level three, you're beginning to experience some negative responses to places, people, and things around you. At this point, you're still able to keep the anger inside, but you do not feel settled. You're still able to think clearly and make sound decisions. Level four, you're now beginning to think about shouting at the apparent source of your anger, but you don't act on those feelings. Your tone of voice might be slightly short. You're beginning to experience tunnel vision. Level 5. At this point, you're angry at yourself, other people, or maybe even the world. You're still in control of your behavior, but it's apparent to others that you're not in a good mood. You're irritable and grouchy. Your decision-making may be impaired. Level 6. You're beginning to think about removing yourself from whatever situation is bothering you. You might begin to fantasize about escape. At this point, you might tell someone off, but you might also make an effort to maintain control. At this point, your mental clarity has most likely become erratic. Level 7. You might begin to think to yourself that you can't stand it anymore or that the source of your anger is driving you crazy. Your thoughts are probably racing and muscle tension has become noticeable. Level 8. You may begin developing a plan of action. Your anger level has become so high, you're now ready to actually do something about it. Your thinking isn't clear. A plan of action might include retaliation or revenge. You might wish to hurt others. At this point, you've become irrational. Level 9. You're now acting on your anger by telling someone off or trying to hurt the apparent source of your anger. You might engage in planning how to reject, neglect or abandon someone else. Your thoughts have become obsessed and completely focused on your anger, even though you may not realize it. At this level, you're completely ruled by your emotions. Level 10. When your anger reaches this level, You've become dangerous to yourself as well as possibly others. You have tunnel vision and are totally focused on your anger and stress. You may feel desperate. The anger is thinking for you. Okay, now where is your anger level? Listen to the following categories to determine which level of anger best describes you most of the time. Emotionally well-balanced. Most of the time, you are between a level 0 and 2. In very extreme circumstances, you might have reached a level 3 or 4, but positive action was able to resolve the issue. Mild anger. You are generally around 2 or 3, based on the scale I mentioned previously, but you frequently hit a 5 or 6, or possibly even higher on occasion. At times, you might have reached a level 9 or 10. Serious anger. You find it difficult not to lose your temper on a daily basis. You can reach a level 8 or 9 fairly easily and quickly. You may have reached a level 10 a few times, but you are usually able to prevent reaching that level. You haven't hurt anyone physically, but you can or may have hurt others verbally. Extreme anger. Most of the time, your anger controls you. Others around you are not emotionally safe and at times may not even be physically safe. There have been times when you may have been a danger to yourself. You can quickly go from a level 3 or 4 to a level 10. Anger is ruining your life. Here are some positive ways to deal with anger. Dealing with anger and learning to manage it in a positive manner isn't always easy. Everyone must deal with problems and anger from time to time, but it's how you respond and the choices you make that are the secret to overcoming these issues. Look for something that calms you down. This could be something such as working out, taking a walk in the park, writing in a journal, etc. Visit with friends or family. Redirect your energy and feelings. Look for other ways you can channel your anger into forms that are productive. Talk to others about how you're feeling. You may also find it beneficial to use your body as a way to cope with your anger. For instance, 
Going to the gym or working out can be a great way to deal with anger when it arises. Give yourself a time out. Even the simple act of taking a deep breath and counting to 10 can often help to diffuse a tense situation. Get some space. Take advantage of the opportunity to take a break from the person or situation that's making you angry until you've calmed down. Think carefully before you say anything. When you speak out of anger, you're more likely to say something you'll regret later. You might find it helpful to write down what you'd like to say so that you can ensure you stick to the actual issues. It can be easy to become sidetracked when you're angry. Once you're calm, express your anger in a non-confrontational manner. Continuing to stew about something that is irritating you will only make the situation worse. Identify possible solutions to the issue. Rather than focusing on what it is that made you angry, try to work through the situation or the person who's making you angry so that you can resolve the issue. Make a point to use I statements when describing a problem rather than you statements. This will help you avoid placing blame or criticizing someone else, which will only make the other person resentful or angry and will increase tension. For example, you might say, I am upset that you didn't help me with this project. Avoid holding a grudge. When you're able to forgive the person who made you angry, It'll be beneficial for both of you. Remember that it's simply unrealistic to expect everyone to behave precisely as you'd like. Use humor to let go of tension. Lightening up a situation can be helpful in diffusing tension and anger. Remember to avoid using sarcasm. It can hurt other people and just make the situation worse. Practice relaxation skills. Learning and practicing skills that will help you to relax and lower your stress levels will also help you to control your temper during times when it's prone to flaring up. Practice visualizing a relaxing scene, deep breathing exercises, or repeating a calming phrase or word to yourself can help you to relax. Other excellent methods for easing anger include doing yoga, meditation, writing in a journal, or listening to calming music. Now, here are some ways to manage your anger. Learning to manage your anger also involves learning to avoid certain behaviors that can escalate your anger. These angry behaviors must be avoided as you learn alternate ways of solving problems and resolving conflict. Stop speaking. One of the best, most foolproof methods for putting a stop to the rage that's building up inside you is to simply stop speaking. Remaining silent does not mean that you've stopped listening to the other person. It simply means that you're controlling your anger. Don't linger in the situation. When you feel anger beginning to build up inside you, it's time to remove yourself from the situation. Do so quickly and quietly. Make a point to actively monitor your anger. And when you notice that your internal anger has begun to escalate to around a level 4 or 5, remove yourself from the situation. Don't return to the situation until you have calmed down and until the other person has calmed down as well. Don't interrupt. One of the fastest ways to stimulate anger is to interrupt or cut off the other person. Make a conscious effort to stop interrupting others. If someone else interrupts you, don't allow it to further antagonize you. Simply stop speaking, and if you're not able to do that, then remove yourself from the situation. Stop swearing. Cursing or swearing can easily increase your blood pressure and heart rate. If you simply stop swearing, you'll be able to stop firing up your internal rage. It'll take some practice and some time but it can provide noticeable results. Do not call names. Name calling is yet another form of insulting aggressive behavior that, much like cursing, can immediately increase levels of anger. Stop calling others names that are derogatory 
demeaning, crude, mean, and vile. Don't use terms such as stupid. Don't try to excuse such behavior by saying later that you are only joking or teasing. Do not threaten. Stop using statements such as, I'm warning you. Even subtle threats can hurt or terrorize other people. They also escalate your anger. Do not shout, yell, or raise your voice. One of the quickest ways to communicate anger is through your tone of voice. There's no mistaking your meaning or intention when you raise your voice. Yelling and shouting can be intimidating and threatening. Make a point to monitor your volume and tone. Use a scale of 0 to 10 if necessary. And when your tone reaches a 4 or above, recognize that it's time to turn down the volume. If you're not sure how to monitor your tone, ask friends and family to help you by pointing out when you raise your voice. Don't attack them when they do. Simply thank them for pointing it out to you and then make a concentrated effort to lower your voice. Do not mock or use sarcasm. Individuals who use passive-aggressive anger often incorporate mocking or sarcasm. For instance, you might insult someone, but then claim you are only joking or trying to make a point. Much like name-calling, it's simply disrespectful and hurtful. It can also damage relationships. Do not physically act on your anger. When you become angry, If you tend to throw things, bang on walls, or slam doors, you must stop this behavior immediately. This isn't simply letting off steam. It's frightening to others and can destroy property. Stop it now. Stop angry gestures. Many times when we become angry, we exhibit gestures like rolling our eyes, sighing, etc. This is another example of passive-aggressive behavior. Many people often think they can get away with it because it's not mean-spirited or overtly destructive. Even so, it's a signal to others that you're angry and that anger is escalating. It can fuel your own anger as well as anger in others. Do not lecture or criticize. Yet another example of passive-aggressive behavior. This can easily escalate an angry response in others without you even taking responsibility for it. Remember that it's not your job to point out the shortcomings of others. By now, you should have a good idea of your own anger level, behaviors you tend to engage in when you're angry, and the warning signs that your anger is escalating. Analyzing past behavior. An excellent way to manage anger is to analyze events that have occurred in the past to gauge your level of anger what triggered your anger, and what you could have done differently and more positively. I'll include a worksheet for analyzing your past behavior in the show notes for this episode at motivationalmasterminds.com. Developing a plan for dealing with your anger. When learning to manage your anger, it's important to develop a plan. Write down a situation from your past that causes you to feel angry. Describe how you would like to react positively to this type of situation. Consider the types of negative behavior you'd like to avoid when you experience anger. Focus on what you'll do instead and what you'll do when you experience the early warning signs of anger. How will you handle situations when you feel angry? While anger might have been a part of your life for a long time, It's possible to gain control of it and learn to express it in a way that's positive rather than in a manner that's negative and which will affect you and others around you. Learning to evaluate how you have responded in the past, recognizing your anger triggers and how you can respond differently, learning to accept what you cannot change and how to forgive are the first steps in learning to manage your anger. With commitment and dedication, you can do it. Good luck. Okay, that's the end of the show today. I hope you're feeling on track and motivated. If you liked what we went over in today's episode, please share it with others. They'll appreciate it. To find links or recommendations, 
mentioned in this podcast, please visit the site at motivationalmasterminds.com. I hope you'll come and join me here every week. This is Phil DeFontenay. See you later. Stay motivated.